Hey, how goes it? I'm Scroll, and I'm going to be giving you a simple tutorial on how to set up hex tokens on Roll20 so they actually fit the grid. I don't like tutorials that beat around the bush, so let's just get into the important stuff. First, you're going to need to drag your hex tokens onto the map. If you're importing it, it's probably going to be large or the wrong size in general, so you're going to need to resize it like so. Or, if you already have them on your character sheet uh, in here, and you drag them in from your character sheet, they should already be roughly the right size, but something's not quite right. If you look at them, they're probably going to have one of a couple of problems. They're either going to be squished, or they're going to be a little small on all sides. To fix this, your GM's going to have to right click on the token, go to advanced, and then set dimension. If the token was squished, the new size is going to be 76 by 88. If the token was small on all sides, do the same thing. The new size should be 84 by 88. There may be other problems with other size tokens and other angles that the hexagons are done in. Uh, but a good rule of thumb is to remember that Roll20's native hex vertical grid is 76 by 88. Um, so you might want to play with the dimensions a little bit. If it's not fitting perfectly, it could matter on uh, where you got your hex and who did it and what their angles were. But generally, in the neighborhood of 76 by 88 is a really good place to start. Uh, I don't play any games on a hex horizontal. Uh, so I don't have any first-hand experience with this, but I've been told that the size for that is 94 by 81. So that's 94 wide by 81 high. Once your tokens look good, your GM's going to want to double-click on the token to bring up the token settings. From the Represents Character drop-down, they're going to want to select the character sheet that's relevant to the character. Once you have your character selected, Click Update Default Token, that'll save the sizes that we did, and then save the token. Now if you bring it out from your character sheet, it'll keep the size that we've set. Furthermore, if you were to edit your character, let's say, I don't know, your character got a cool scar, or uh, you're playing Lancer and you got a new mech and you need to change that, as long as you replace your hex token, with a token that is the same size, say you take it into Photoshop or whatever and use it as the same base token, and save that, it should keep all the changes without being squished like it was originally. So once you save those settings, it should be good forever as long as you bring it out from the same character sheet. Now if you don't save those settings, you'll bring it out and it'll stay small like this. So again, let me just show set it to the right character sheet, update default, save settings, and now it's the right size. Larger hex tokens require a little more math to figure out, and honestly I just kind of eyeball them with the dimensions in mind. So if I bring out the 2x2, two two, I'm going to scale it down, it doesn't quite fit. Um, I'm just going to set the dimensions to around 150 by 150. Now the reason it doesn't matter as much is because, as you can see, uh, Roll20 does not like size 2 tokens because it tries to, to snap the center of the token into the center of a hex rather than lining it up like so. Uh, there's a really easy workaround for this. You just press Alt when you move your token and you can line it up kind of manually. The reason I don't really particularly care if it's perfectly sized, like I do the size 1 tokens, because, I mean, you're going to be moving it around, it's not going to snap, and it's it's not going to look perfect no matter what, so why bother putting in the effort? Um, now, a size 3 token, on the other hand, since it has a definite center that is one hex wide, like if I were to... Go there, see, we have the hex on each side. This one will snap well, uh, and it matters a little bit more if it's perfect. Um, the 
I'm using Lancer's template ones for this example, and they're not perfectly angled to match Roll20's angles, so you get a little bit of gap here and there, but size-wise, it fits pretty well. And the size for a size 3 is about uh, 224 by 220. Now, a size 4, you're going to have the same kind of problem as a size 2. It's going to want to snap it in the wrong spot. So you're going to need to press Alt and line it up. But the likelihood of needing one of these is a lot lower. Um, this is in Lancer. It's like, you know, an airship or a giant, giant, colossal walking fortress mech. Um, in some other games, it might be a dragon or some kind of giant thing like that. So it's a lot less likely you're going to have to deal with this. Uh, but GMs will find that handy uh, just to have the ability to do this. Same thing would go for odd-shaped ones. If, for example, you had a dragon that's like a size 3 but has a tail that curves around like... I'm just going to do this. But I believe I can just group this together into one token. Yeah, see how it wants to move the center? So it doesn't really like that. But you can just press Alt to, to snap and move it around. So hopefully you found this helpful in uh, dealing with larger, cumbersome, or oddly shaped tokens. Um, hexes are very strange in Roll20, and they don't seem to be giving much support, but with the rise in popularity of hex-based games, I'm hoping maybe we get some better support, just natively, without having to do weird stuff or download macros. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully this helps. Um, if you're regular to my channel, you know that I really, really hate promoting myself at all. Over the years of YouTube, I never like asking for subs. But I'm like 30 subscribers away from getting a free license for voice mod. If you haven't seen voice mod, it's a cool voice changer that a lot of people use for their D&D and stuff. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like literally 30 subscribers, less than 30 subscribers away from getting the free creator license, which I mean, don't tell them my channel's dead, but I will apply for that if I can hit 3000 subscribers. So if, uh, if this helped you and you don't care uh, that, uh, I might post scarce content randomly on my dead-ass channel. Um, maybe think about subscribing and then just ignoring my videos so I don't have to pay $100 for voice mod. Uh, I would appreciate that. So uh, yeah, hopefully that helped you guys. Uh, have fun out there playing. I have to get back to making like a million Lancer tokens. So uh, I just thought I'd make this quick tutorial since I'm learning how to fix this problem that I've run into along the way.